Onward we march on our page on enzymes. We have been discussing um, particularly important enzymes to learn about in the body, uh, especially if you will be studying anatomy and physiology or in general like to know about um, how your bodies work. So we've gone through important enzymes in the digestive system, we've talked about some in the liver, and now I would like to talk about a little bit in the blood vessel. So the first one is going to have to do with blood clotting. So draw kind of a squiggly protein here, and this represents a plasma protein made by your liver called fibrinogen. Whenever you see O-gen on the start of a name, that indicates that it's inactive. Fibrinogen, um, like going along like this, doesn't form a blood clot, but if it is activated um, and cleaved enzymatically by an enzyme known as thrombin, then it stretches out into these long fibrin strands. And this fibrin then forms the mesh or the clot of coagulation. So let's use our color coding where we make the um, substrate is purple. We're talking about a chemical reaction. We'll put that in green. The name of the um, enzyme necessary here is thrombin. And then this, the product that's formed from this reaction is fibrin. So then I will also highlight in pink the enzyme. So substrate purple, enzyme pink, and product in blue. And then just to remind yourself, this is uh, an example of uh, how blood clotting requires enzymes. It actually requires um, a whole bunch of clotting factors. Uh, and I'm just highlighting one of them here for you. A lot of times students eventually are required to know a little bit about thrombin and drugs that work for um, to uh, inhibit it so that you don't get clotting when you shouldn't, etc. Okay, now the next one I wanna show you um, has to do with raising your blood pressure. So I'm gonna give you another um, inactive plasma protein. This one is called angiotensinogen. And it's a big name, I know, but the O-gen indicates it's inactive. Angio means vessel, and then tensing is like to tense a vessel. So you can see that something about this is going to cause our blood vessels to be tensed, or in other words, raise our blood pressure, but the O-gen tells us it's not doing it yet. So what has to happen is it gets um, converted enzymatically into angiotensin 1, And this is sort of a precursor. You can tell where we're going with this if we have an angiotensin 1, um, that it can get converted into something called angiotensin 2. And this is really where the money happens. This is the very potent uh, vasoconstrictor that will make blood pressure go up. So um, the enzyme here is called renin. And it's called that because it is made by your kidneys, and renin means kidneys. And the enzyme that converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 has a really great name that's easy to remember, angiotensin converting enzyme. Sorry, it's getting a little messy. This is better, better known as ACE. So sometimes people take ACE inhibitors to inhibit this action, this enzyme enzymatic reaction from occurring, and by doing so, they are taking a medication that lowers blood pressure. Okay, so then let's put our colors in. So angiotensin tensinogen should be purple because it's a substrate that renin acts on. We're also going to make angiotensin 1 purple. You could claim that this is a, both a product and um, a substrate. That's fine. I just don't have enough colors to do everything, I guess. Uh, and then let's put this in green, and then this also should be in green. Angiotensin 2 is the show me the money. It's This is the big thing we're going for here to raise blood pressure. And the enzyme, enzymes that make this happen, renin that comes from the kidneys, and angiotensin converting enzyme then converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. 
Uh, then as a summary statement here, this is called the renin angiotensin uh, system, actually also called the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, but I didn't talk about the aldosterone part here. So the renin angiotensin system raises blood pressure and it's a really cool way that our kidneys are able to monitor blood volume and if it blood volume gets a little low they release renin and set this whole thing into action so let's go ahead and put this one in yellow okay pretty cool so we've done digestive enzymes we've done liver enzymes we've done a couple of examples of blood enzymes and now um, last, I want to just do a few examples of the mitochondrial enzymes. Okay, so we know, of course, that glycolysis um, is the conversion. Let's, so let's name this. Glycolysis is the breakdown of a six-carbon sugar glucose into pyruvate, which uh, is a three-carbon sugar. And then pyruvate is converted into acetyl-CoA. And acetyl-CoA then um, goes through what's called the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. And then through a series of um, processes, we get lots and lots of ATP produced. So um, in this case, glucose is the substrate and pyruvate is um, a product what also is going to be a substrate because things will act on it and we have got lots and lots of enzymes that are working here this is 11 enzymatic reactions just to get from glucose to pyruvate lots oh yeah so pink for lots of enzymes and this is so even though I just use one arrow, a lot of times these complicated reactions can take uh, multiple enzymes. And um, then as you can see, when we get to acetyl-CoA, there are a bunch of reactions occurring here too. This is the citric acid cycle. And we can put that in yellow and it requires um, a whole bunch of enzymes, many, many enzymes, that's what that asterisk means. And then this sort of reflects what's called the electron transport chain. And it relies on multiple enzymes as well. Uh, the one at the very end of the chain is ATP synthase. This is an amazing molecule. It's kind of like a molecular motor and a pump and an enzyme all in one. And it is able to produce all this ATP. So actually the ATP synthase works at the very end of the electron transport chain. Okay, then the other thing I wanted to point out here, so we've got all these different enzymes that are important in the mitochondria. Enzymes to break down glucose to pyruvate, enzymes to conver convert pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, um, enzymes to continue to break down acetyl-CoA and rearrange its carbons, and then um, enzymes to pass electrons down the electron transport chain, and then ATP synthase is what's actually producing the ATP. But glucose is not our only substrate. We can also have fatty acids that can be converted into acetyl-CoA and amino acids. Some amino acids get converted into pyruvate. Oh, actually we did one of those over here. Alanine gets converted into pyruvate, so that's how it gets to go into the um, mitochondria. Some amino acids get to go straight into the, to, um, the citric acid cycle. It depends on what kind, which amino acid they are. And then um, ketone bodies, can also pretty much go straight into uh, the citric acid cycle. They sort of have an advantage that way. So these are all examples of fuels that can eventually be used to make ATP by the mitochondria. Thanks.